What's going on, family? Black African power. Man, look, got a special uh, clip we're going to play today. It was during the question and answer period of Samantha Cater's interview. Just coming by way of Three the Hard Way. All right, brought to you by the community of skeptics. And I wanted to make sure and guys and goes, he got a chance to actually interact with one of the elders in the community that deals with subject matters uh, that Gozi has proven himself to be prolific in. So I thought it was time for him to have a good question and answer uh, with the expert. And man, it was a great conversation right there. So y'all know what it is. Rolling deep three the hard way, legacy we claim. Unlock the timid wisdom, they remember our name. Of the god killer, from the streets, no shame. Dive in the metal meta, unleash the ancient flame. Pseudos fall back, they can't comprehend. Real ones rise up, knowledge never ends. Free the hard way, we break the chains. Unlock your secrets, no more mundane. Chemist power running through our veins. Pseudo killers fade while we stake our claims. Man, I hope y'all enjoy this portion of the interview because I did. Let's get right to it. Uh, Brother Ngozi. Uh, Brother Ngozi is one of the early pioneers on the Amaral squad. Uh, he was the youngest member. We always called him the young uh, phenom. And I promised him uh, to have uh, access to uh, great questions that I know you got. Uh, this is one of the brothers that his deal is talking dna that's what he liked to talk about and he was definitely one of the first persons that was actually spitting that fire with dna at a very young age i say 22 years old okay uh so now you got your shot goes he with all the conversations you have <laughs> and all the talking you got and all yeah, that you got and let me say this uh i work in concepts i'm a biological anthropologist i'm not a population geneticist but let us say I have a good bullshit detector. <laughs> okay, so go ahead. Hey, how you doing? Ramadan uh, Mubarak. Ramadan Kareem. Alhamdulillah. Allah okay, Thank you. Uh, hey, look, I've been, I follow you, uh, uh, Baba Keta. I, 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 I follow your work. Um, I was one of the first people to bring your video in like 10 years ago or 12 years ago. Um, 14, 15. 14, 14 yeah. or 15 years ago. Um, I, I, I'm i in the process. I would like to become a bioanthropologist. I tend to get my, I, I did receive an associate's degree in biology, but I want to go further in my education to go sure. more in deal with it. But I wanted to um, just ask you a, a quick question. I was a few credits away from getting my bachelor's, but that's another story. Sure. But I wanted to ask you a quick question because it's a lot of stuff going around um, about the back migrations in Africa. Okay. Um, Primarily the, the Natufian population that we know had hapl that was part of the haplogroup E family, which is African. Right. right. It, is it safe? Could it be safe for us to include Epipaleolithic Levant in early Arabia West as Greater Africa when they yeah. when they, when they, when, they, when they are seeing like these Natufian signals in early dynastic Egyptians? Well, what they're calling Natufian signals are probably original basal. Africans in the first place. Let me tell you why. Now, uh, uh, answer your first question is that I've already written actually in print and peer reviewed stuff somewhere. I talk about an Africasian concept. I say there's no reason why we can't have an Africasia if there's a, a Eurasia. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Africasia. People left Africa and they got to Australia before they got to Norway. Okay. Yes. So, so, so there's no reason you could develop a whole line of arguments and perspective by yoking those two areas and then going north or looking north. You could do that. Th that's not done, but you could do it. But now in order to do anything avant-garde, anything new like that, you got to have all your stuff tight. Mm -hmm. You know, your 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 information. But yeah, so the answer to your question is yes. Now, when they talk about Natufian signals in Egypt, the question becomes, uh, are they, what they're really saying 
in, in my opinion, okay, Natufians, uh, 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 late, late Natufian hunters have evidence of, of tropical limb proportions, okay? Mm -hmm. They also, now we have the DNA, they have certain craniofacial features and they and those things got transmitted to the first farmers. Larry Angel wrote this in 1973. You're familiar with him? No, I'm not. J. Lawrence Angel? No. Hold on for a second. I'm going to do something that I normally wouldn't do, but I'm going to I'm going to do this here. Uh, God, I'm going to the stack of books there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, let me yeah. hold on. Hold on. Let me see. That's a good thing. I, I need to. I Absolutely. need to find it. Okay. Uh, Got a mighty stack of books. Find it. Uh, let's see here. Against this background of disease movement and pedomorphic reduction of body size, one can identify and grow it, uh, parenthesis, Ethiopic or Bushmanoid traits of nose and prognathism appearing in the Tufian latest hunters, he's quoting McCown on that, and in Anatolian and Macedonian first farmers. Uh, Angel's own work. He's the one that trained me, by the way. Probably mm -hmm. from Nubia via the unknown predecessors of the Bedarian. Okay. Written in 1972. Okay. So, wow. so my point is, and then what happened? We got ancient DNA out of those Natufians, these latest Natufians. And guess mm -hmm. what? E-haplogroup, group, including mm -hmm. a, a P2, mm -hmm. underived, okay, mm -hmm. as well as some M78s, okay? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, now their mitochondrial DNA might be local because men tend to move around more. But so you're looking at a process that may have happened a long time ago. In addition to this, Lauren Brace, who I don't always like, but who did. Yes. In yes. 1993, yeah. uh, Lauren Brady says there seems to be a sub-Saharan element, and then yes. and Schreiner uh, from NIH, uh, who I've actually been on a paper with, and I have my issues with him, uh, but uh, I, I think that he's done some uh, excellent work and so forth. He also identifies, and, and, and there's another paper by someone else, a quote Somali element type element in in these late epipaleic people. So you've got all the evidence there that you can put together if you're trying to write a story, uh, but but you shouldn't be satisfied just with that because so what if they're connected in that way? You want to do some other stuff. I mean, and even at that level, you want to talk about some other things, okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, you could call some, Ali Majuri talked about Afrabia. Yeah, mm -hmm. you could do that. There's, there's no reason why you could. Those are arbitrary things. People drew a line in the sand. Those were decisions that were made. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, uh, and so uh, you could begin to talk that way. You get some pushback. I mean, after all, Eurasia is a very interesting concept. I mean, what yokes Eurasia is it because there's no boundary? With, there's no boundary between Africa and Asia either. That's I, mean, right. I mean, it's a narrower uh, passing, but there's no boundary. And so when you think Eurasia, what do people? What, what do you think people are really talking about? Well, in part, mm -hmm. they're talking about Indo-European uh, mm -hmm. languages coming from the Asian steppes. So, so the ironic thing is that. The Basque speak an indigenous Mesolithic aged language and the rest of the European languages for the most part have their origins in Central Asia or an ancestor came from there. Yet when Seligman and Seligman's thesis, and this is the fear, we didn't talk about this, the fear of, 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 of using the term Hamido-Semitic or Afro-Asiatic is that because of Seligman's thesis, the Hamidic hypothesis that they came from Asia, you know, uh, it's been used to de-Africanize Africa. And that's the way Seligman wrote about it. Although mm -hmm. Seligman, when you read his book very carefully, she even found an old copy from somewhere. Seligman himself says that not everybody thinks that Hamites came from Asia. He says some people say they came from East Africa. 
He said, mm -hmm. and if that's the case, we're talking about a migration, not from Asia into Africa, but a, a, a migration into Negro land. Those mm -hmm. are his exact words. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so in admitting that he's admitting the possibility of African diversity, mm -hmm. you see, he's admitting mm -hmm. it, but not exploring it. And I have a paper that I sent to Aunt. Um, you can get it from him. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can email me. I'll, I can send it to you too. So my, yes, I've had, been having trouble with my computer, but anyway, he he has it. It's a paper that I wrote on genealogy of ideas. Um, okay, got yeah, that. Just give that. Yeah, just give that to him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I got but, it. Uh, but yeah, if you go back to school, I don't know how old you are. I'm not going to ask you that. It's mm -hmm. never too late. But the older you get, especially if you have a family, the harder it gets. But that's okay if you want to do it. Nothing's mm -hmm. worth doing. It's not hard. Now you, yes, you're in Atlanta, right? I'm in Chicago. Hey, Chicago. Oh, wow. You know, <laughs> what I was going to say is that you probably could slip in, have a conversation with Rick Kittles to get the mm -hmm. rest of, and get into a lab training scenario. Because mm -hmm. um, he, I mean, he's kind of, he's a population geneticist uh, mm -hmm. in his own way. But but anyway, you could do that. And it, it, we, we've made this almost personal conversations, but the whole world is listening. <laughs> Be careful with our audience here. So anyway, but go ahead. Uh, yeah, Bobby Kidd. I want. I want. I wanted one more. One more question. Um, Kobe, just, Kobe, you can go. I just want to get the sources because people are asking for the last two things he mentioned. The sources, and then you can go ahead and ask the last thing. I'm just in his paper. Yeah, he mentioned two things. Actually, it's Juju that asked for the sources. So, you do you uh, can you give those to us, Doctor Kader? Do you? If we can get them. Uh, when you say you mean the Larry Angel paper. Title the title again of Haber's papers and the source. Oh, oh, ha oh, Haber's paper is some starts off with a rare deep rooting haplogroup. So I tell you what, just go to Google Scholar, put in Haber H E B E R, comma, rare deep rooting haplogroup, and you'll get it. Thank you. I think I got it. I just wanted to double check and the source you just gave in Gozi. Uh -huh. Wonderful. All right. Oh no, that's J. J Lawrence Angel. It's called Biological Relations of Egyptian and Eastern Mediterranean Populations during pre-dynastic and dynastic times. Thank you. And, uh, and uh, he happens to mention the things about the Natufian. And he studied the Anatolian remains himself. I mean, Angel probably had his hand on every ancient Greek skeleton that ever existed. In fact, there's a fellowship named after him. But he's the one who taught me skeletal biology at the Smithsonian when I was in medical school. So uh, he, he was a nice man, too. He was nice. He was Toby, you go ahead next Anglo Saxon, but he, he was a very nice man. So uh, 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 Bobby Ketcha, with, with the community, we we always been scientifically scientific enthusiasts to get people to want to get interested in the field of science, especially with studying like ancient Africa, just humanity as a whole. And I wanted to talk about or uh, ask about the principal component analysis or the PCAs that's used. One of the major things that a lot of people try to use in the uh, so-called underground community that they call the conscious community is um dna tribes or um not just jet match but dna tribes that use eight out of i know you used you brought up the pop affiliator and you brought up that the algorithms can change based off the calculators that's used but a lot of people try to bring up jet match i mean um dna tribes with the eight out of 13 strs that was used mm -hmm. to try to promote that the Egyptians, because the pathogens, because when Zabi Hawass additionally used it, it was based off pathogen and diseases that that fell in line or had a, a had, that shared affinity with populations that they classify as sub-Saharan Africa, primarily like sickle cell and malaria. But a lot of people, when they seen that, I try to tell them we don't want to say things in a wrong way and look at these PCAs like they're absolutes because the algorithms can change based off what you use. They have higher microsatellites now with higher resolutions that can give a better chart than what they did with the 13 or eight out of 13 STRs at that time. So I wanted to ask, so could you go into detail of those STRs, those short tandem repeats that was used and explain, or, or could you tell the audience that that doesn't represent the overall composition genetically of the well, Egyptian? Well, no, I, I, can't, I can't talk about that in detail now okay. for two reasons. Okay. Number one, uh, they used the coders, so they used uh, uh, what they had available. That's always the case. Mm -hmm. The other thing, too, is that I'm not a population geneticist. I know about STRs, and I know what certain things mean with STRs, and I kind of know the limitations. But 
what they got was a, what DNA tribes got is what they got using their patented algorithm. If you take the data from Zahi Hawass's article mm -hmm. uh, 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 and run those in other and other algorithms, you will get you may get some other answers. OK, mm -hmm. but the point is, is that uh, uh, overall, from my perspective, is just what it shows is that you have a background. And it may be a trivial answer, but th there's a background that that's deep and the question becomes can you always separate out the general human background from a specifically mm -hmm. african background okay mm -hmm. however i think that the dna tribes thing was illuminating i think the repeat <laughs> study that we did that uh gordine and i did is also i happen to think that that's valid and true but when you put all of the information together so you you, you have to put a lot of different stuff together but there's no reason not to think otherwise. Again, people were in Africa for 850,000 years before they left, or, or longer, much longer. Modern people, there would have been time for a lot of diversification, okay? A lot of diversification. All Africans, therefore, in different regions would not have been the same, you know, North Sea, South, whatever. So wherever they left from, uh, whoever left, uh, the, the, the people that left are going to be, in theory, more similar to the people uh uh in, in in superficial ways than than uh the, than all of the other populations but there's this deep layer that's a human layer right mm -hmm. there's a layer of the little different things that we use to make distinctions uh and talk about regional populations and stuff so that's the only way i can answer that for you yes sir. yes sir thank you i appreciate you and assalamu alaikum to you peace to you brother alhamdulillah Peace. Okay. Thank, right. you. Thank you. Hey, right. and I'm glad this is a good space, man, to end the interview with Brother Ngasi and Gozi, man. He know my friend. Uh, uh, helps promote the scientific literacy in the community, man. We appreciate him. And big up to Three the Hard Ways. It's a show we do uh, when we talk all things Egypt. Dr. K, man, we appreciate you. have been a powerful guest tonight, man. Rolling G3 the hard way, legacy we claim All our contaminants, wisdom, they remember our name Of the God killer, from the streets, no shame Dive in the mental meta, unleash the ancient flame Pseudos fall back, they can't comprehend Real ones rise up, knowledge never ends We the hard way, we break the chains Our luck is secrets, no more mundane Chemist power running through our veins Pseudo killers fade while we stake our claims Man, I hope y'all enjoy this portion of the interview because I did. Let's get right to it.